And it's Mike from Wooly Bug. And Darren from Piscator Flies. Hey guys, this is Mike from Wooly Bug. Today, Darren's going to show you how to tie the Walk's Worm pattern. This generic nymph pattern is original to the state of Pennsylvania, and it's great to use for both wild and stock trout. Many fly fishermen debate what the waltz worm imitates, and you'll hear everything from a crane fly larva to various mayfly nymphs, but I like to fish a waltz worm as a lead fly in a two nymph setup and dead drift it under an indicator. And one thing's clear, it works. There is a slight variation of this pattern called the sexy waltz worm, which is also a fly I've had a lot of success with. And at the end of this video, you can tap or click a link to watch me successfully fish a waltz worm on Morgan Run Creek in Maryland. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this pattern, and Darren will show you how. Thanks, Mike. All right, let's start off by getting a fresh hook in the vise. I've already placed a bead on this one. Uh, the hook that we're using is uh, Mustad S82-3906B. And the bead that I've got on there is a brass 3.2 millimeter on the number 12. All right, so first thing, we're gonna add a little bit of extra weight to the fly. We're going to add a little bit of 0 0.020 lead and I'm going to do somewhere between 8 and 10 wraps and we're just going to add that, pinch off the end and then wrap forward the tag end. This way we don't have any wasted uh, material and push that right in behind the bead. For thread we're going to be using a Ultra Thread Rusty Brown and we're using a 70 denier th uh, thickness or an 8 dot thread. I mean you don't have to use the Rusty Brown but I do like a, to use a dark color here. So we'll just wrap that on behind where the lead stopped, trim off our tag end. Next we're going to take a piece of Ultra Wire. We're going to be using gold colored and I'm going to be using the brassy size for number 12. Yeah, you're probably okay to use this down to a 14 or 16. If you're going smaller than that, you might want to look at getting the small size of wire. So we'll just start this. Uh, we'll bump, butt that up against the back of the lead and then wind that down towards the bend. And we're going to try and build a little bit of taper between the lead and the hook shank just so that we don't have an abrupt change in the body whip width. Just kind of helps proportion the fly a little bit better I feel. So for dubbing there's a number of different dubbings you can use. Today we're going to be using a Superfly Eastern March Brown it's kind of a light color. Uh, I'll tie this using just the standard hair's ear dubbing. So you don't want to get this on too thick. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dub short fine noodles and we want to gradually build up our taper here. So we'll twist on a little bit of our dubbing. And then we're just going to make sure that we have our thread covered and then we're going to start winding forward and just gradually building that taper. Another dubbing that you can use for this is the Hairs Air Plus which has a nice added feature. It's got some extra fibers in there. I believe it's uh, an Antron fiber. Uh, if you wanted to accent this on your own you could add a pinch of ice dub to some of the hairs here and that'll give it a nice sparkle as well. Just another trigger factor that uh, you can add to your fly. So we're, as you can see we're kind of creating a carrot shape on the dubbing. If 
I was tying this without a bead head, I would probably go for a cigar shape. And the brown thread that we're using here, that just will help give kind of a, a bit of a color difference between the thread or bet between the dubbing that we're using here. So we're wrapping up our wire ribbing. And just make sure that's secure and then we'll just use a helicopter motion just to pull that off. If you pull it tight and give it a little wiggle it should pop off fairly quickly. Now we'll just add a whip finish to the fly. And that's your basic waltz worm. It's a nice little crane fly larva imitation or perhaps even a caddis of sorts. Just trim our thread and if you'd like to you can add a little bit of head cement to that. If you brush this out kind of gives it a head start. This is one of those flies that works better the buggier it gets so a little bit of extra roughness on there doesn't hurt whatsoever. All right, this is a pretty easy fly, so I'm going to show you this variation. This is Walt or the sexy waltz worm. So it's basically the same pattern. I'm just going to change it up a little bit. So again, we start with the same mustad hook. I'm using the S82, and if you wanted to change that for a couple different models, you could try a Tiemco 5262 or Daiichi. 1710 or the Partridge H1A. Those all would be good hooks to use for this pattern. So again we'll just use the O2O lead and we've got a brass bead on here. And again this is the size 12 hook that we're using. And for thread we're going to be using a fluorescent pink and this is the Danville uh, six aught, it's a 70 denier thread. So we'll start again right behind the where the lead ends and we'll kind of cover that lead up a little bit if we can. So rather than using uh, gold wire uh, for the ribbing on this, we're gonna add a more reflective material. So we're going to use a little bit of the Flashaboo Mirage. This is a opalescent, pearlescent material. It's got a ton of shine on there. So all we need is one strand. So we'll find one strand and we'll tie that in just behind the lead wraps on the back of the fly. And we'll just kind of, as we tie this, we'll keep in mind to try and create a bit of a taper up from the body to the lead. So again we're going to do fine noodles of dubbing and again we're going to use the same dubbing here for this. And we just want to try and keep the dubbing noodles fairly fine. They can get a little thicker at times. Uh, you just twist them in that should keep them in check and again same idea as we're wrapping our dubbing we want to kind of just keep in mind that we're going to be creating a tapered body or a carrot shaped body on this fly so it'll probably take you couple applications of dubbing to get enough onto the hook. Of course if you're tying smaller smaller flies it won't take quite as long. This dubbing is fairly short fibers so it might be a little bit tricky to dub this on but I find if you use a tight pinch as you're wrapping it on and you're using a waxed thread it stays on there fairly well. Alright so that looks like a fairly good taper. 
and uh, I think we'll that's that a half hitch here just to make sure we don't bump anything off so we're going to take our mirage and we're going to wind this back on the bare hook shank just to create a bit of a tag on there and then once we have a nice tag we're going to wrap that through the body and you can see that makes a really nice ribbing for the fly take that up to the top now we're going to make a bit of a hot spot right behind the bead it's sort of uh, Frenchy style or Euro nymphing style of uh, hot spot but it's quite effective for these little nymphs so we'll just add a whip finish here as you can see this is a really simple pattern just a few things to keep in mind as you're tying it but there you go there's the sexy version of the nymph waltz worm hey tires thanks for checking out our video please take a minute and check out mike's excellent on the water vlogs over at the woolly bug youtube channel i've got some links in the description that you can follow if you enjoyed the video and want to show a bit of support for what we're doing here, why not give it a thumbs up? Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updated on the latest fly patterns, books, and reviews. If you have any questions or comment, leave a message below. We make sure to answer each and every one. Until next time, this is Darren saying keep a hook in your vice. Cheers. <laughs>